The Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak was, and still is, the stuff of legend. Year after year, fans tuned into the WWE's biggest show to see The Undertaker defend his winning streak. Guys like Kevin Nash, Psycho Sid, Kane, Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, Batista, Triple H. The Phenom destroyed some of the biggest names in the business while solidifying himself as a legend of WrestleMania. The streak became part of the show, an attraction within the attraction, and in many ways, the streak transcended the WrestleMania show itself. As The Undertaker said, at one point, Point, there were three things that were guaranteed in life death, taxes, and the streak. The streak began all the way back at WrestleMania 7 in 1991 when The Undertaker defeated Jimmy Snuka in around 4 minutes. Back then, absolutely no one could have guessed that The Undertaker would carve out his own WrestleMania tradition that would span decades. From 1991 to 2013, The Undertaker was victorious at WrestleMania, but at WrestleMania 30 in 2014, held in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, the streak was broken and The Undertaker suffered his first loss at WrestleMania. Fans and wrestlers alike felt that the streak would never end. People had gotten comfortable with The Undertaker one day ending his career with the streak still intact and in doing this, there would always be this legendary WrestleMania story about a man who couldn't be beaten on the grandest stage of all. But this didn't happen. The Undertaker was soundly beaten in the middle of the ring by Brock Lesnar and the post-match reactions from the Superdome all the way to the wrestling dirt sheets was like nothing we'd seen before. Before. While fans in attendance reacted with pure shock and surprise, the wrestling media and the quote smart fans scrambled to find a reason for the streak ending. There had to be a story here, right? There had to be some sort of reason for the WWE ending a yearly tradition that fans genuinely loved. Well, immediately following WrestleMania 30, there really wasn't an answer given, but as the years went on, the WWE and The Undertaker opened up a little more about the end of the streak. And this is what we're going to look at in today's video. The Undertaker's return around WrestleMania season had become pretty formulaic as we went into 2014. Along with the usual rumours around who would win the Royal Rumble and who would main event WrestleMania, there would also be speculation in regards to The Undertaker's opponent for the big show. The WWE left it quite late in the run up to WrestleMania 30 with The Undertaker's opponent getting confirmed on the February 24th episode of Raw. Brock Lesnar showed up in the final segment of this broadcast alongside Paul Heyman. Heyman said that Lesnar should be main eventing WrestleMania, and when Paul approached Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in regards to Lesnar's Mania match, Brock was given an open match contract. This meant Brock could challenge anyone he wanted at WrestleMania with the exception of the world champion. Heyman called this a consolation prize. The open contract meant nothing. Brock Lesnar wants to make history at WrestleMania, and he can only do that by conquering the world champion. Heyman said the open contract is not acceptable, and if Lesnar isn't wrestling for the WWE's biggest prize, then Lesnar would not be appearing at WrestleMania. As Heyman and Brock went to leave the ring, The Undertaker's gong echoed around the arena, and out walked the Phenom, the legend of WrestleMania himself. Brock Lesnar stood face to face with The Undertaker in the middle of the ring, and the dead man made it clear that he wanted Brock at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar grabbed the contract that Heyman had just thrown away, and Brock signed his name. Lesnar invited Undertaker to do the same, and the Phenom drove the pen into Lesnar's hand before delivering a chokeslam through the table. If Brock wanted to make WrestleMania history, he was going to do it by facing The Undertaker and facing the streak. Although no one, not even Brock, would know just how much history would be made in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. 
Taker showed up on the March 10th episode of Raw to cut a promo, but he was interrupted by a nervous Paul Heyman. Heyman took the time to put over The Undertaker's winning streak at WrestleMania, saying that people really don't understand the magnitude of 21 straight victories on the WWE's biggest stage. Heyman's mic work here, simply put, was excellent. Paul talked about how other superstars of the WWE couldn't ever dream of holding a winning streak like The Undertaker's, noting that Mr. WrestleMania himself, Shawn Michaels, couldn't even managed two straight wins at Wrestlemania, Hulk Hogan got the three but could never reach four, Stone Cold Steve Austin and John Cena got four straight wins but they couldn't get to five. Heyman says that the 21 wins that The Undertaker holds at Wrestlemania has made the dead man more than a myth, more than a legend. The Undertaker is a deity of biblical proportions. With this in mind, Paul Heyman asked The Undertaker not to show up at Wrestlemania 30 in New Orleans. Heyman said everyone needs something to to worship. The fans worship The Undertaker, the fans worship The Streak, and even Paul Heyman worships The Undertaker after seeing how the Phenom performed at WrestleMania 29 against CM Punk. Heyman said that Brock Lesnar is the reality that will come crashing down on the fantasy that is 22-0. If The Undertaker steps into the ring at WrestleMania 30, then The Streak would get conquered by Brock Lesnar. The Undertaker sent a message to Brock Lesnar that was really quite simple. If Brock shows up in New York Orleans, then Lesnar would rest in peace. The next week on Raw, Paul Heyman brought up a good point. The Undertaker had struggled against his last few WrestleMania opponents. Not only this, but those same opponents who gave The Undertaker a run for his money had also been destroyed by Brock Lesnar. We see footage of The Undertaker's matches with Mark Henry, Shawn Michaels and Triple H at previous WrestleManias, and we also see footage of Brock Lesnar destroying these same men. No footage of CM Punk though, but Heyman's point was clear as day. Those opponents who pushed The Undertaker to his limits had all fallen victim to Brock Lesnar at one time or another. Two weeks before WrestleMania, Lesnar showed up on Raw wearing a new t-shirt, and Paul Heyman spoke with a lot of confidence when he said the streak is coming to an end in New Orleans. As Heyman began saying that breaking the streak was Brock's guaranteed ticket to WrestleMania immortality, Lesnar snatched the mic away from his advocate, and Lesnar said he wasn't at Raw to promote matches, he was at Raw to fight. Brock calls out The Undertaker, and smoke begins to fill the entranceway. A coffin is brought down to the ring by The Undertaker's druids, and Brock Lesnar almost finds humour in this stunt while Paul Heyman looks extremely anxious and concerned. Lesnar's demeanour soon changes, he tries to wake up whatever's inside the casket as Paul Heyman can be heard shouting, I don't like this Brock. Eventually Lesnar builds up enough courage to open the casket, and he finds nothing inside. Lesnar gets angry, he chases the druids away and he tells Paul Heyman he isn't playing games. As Heyman begins cutting a scathing promo on The Undertaker, the casket opens up again and The Undertaker is inside. The dead man rises and a fight breaks out between the Phenom and the Beast. Lesnar ends up taking a bump on top of the casket and Raw ends with both men pointing at the WrestleMania sign. On the Raw before WrestleMania, The Undertaker kicked the show off with an in-ring promo. Taker said he doesn't claim to be better than his WrestleMania victims, but the streak has stayed alive because The Undertaker goes further than anyone else. The Undertaker understands that Brock Lesnar is a dangerous opponent, and The Undertaker also says that it's inevitable that one day the streak will get broken, but right now there are three things that can't be beaten, death, taxes, and the streak. Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar interrupt the promo and Paul Heyman says that the Wrestlemania match this Sunday isn't a match that Brock Lesnar has to win, rather it's a match that The Undertaker can't lose. All it takes is one moment, one F5 and three seconds later the streak is over. Paul says that this Sunday the WWE will present the most historic Wrestlemania moment since Hulk Hogan defeated Andre the Giant. Brock Lesnar will defeat The Undertaker's undefeated streak at Wrestlemania and that's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. Lesnar and Heyman go to leave, but Lesnar has second thoughts. The Beast changes his mind and he begins approaching the ring. Lesnar teases both The Undertaker and the fans in attendance. He pretends to walk away only to return to ringside, and Lesnar gets into the ring to once again brawl with the dead man. This time though, Lesnar got the upper hand. The Undertaker took an F5 while the commentary team said that if this happens at WrestleMania, then the streak will end. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the match before we talk about the finish and the aftermath. The Undertaker vs Brock Lesnar went on third from last and there were many reports of fans not being able to enjoy the rest of the show after what transpired. Seriously, the streak meant that much to people. The hype video before the match was pretty standard, it was another highlight reel of The Undertaker's streak, but then the tone of the video changes when Paul Heyman begins addressing the viewers at home and in the arena. Heyman says that the world is going to remember what happens tonight. When the record number becomes 21 and 1, the smaller number will become the biggest number. Brock Lesnar is the one in 21 and 1, and Heyman tells the world that all good things do indeed come to an end. Heyman then begins repeating the mantra of Brock Lesnar, eat, sleep, conquer, repeat, and the video ends with Heyman saying, eat, sleep, conquer the streak. Watching all this back actually made me appreciate how good Paul Heyman really was throughout this whole WrestleMania buildup, and he doesn't get any credit for it, it's pretty much all for Gotten due to the match finish. A very, very small amount of people knew what was going to happen during this match, and Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman were two of those people. I'm sure Lesnar knew how monumental this bout would be, but Paul Heyman must have been beside himself. This would be historic, it was going to grab headlines. The wrestling world would be talking about this match for years, even decades to come. You can hear Paul Heyman shouting at Lesnar that Brock has earned this, so go and and do it. Go and take it. The arena gets soaked in blue lights as we see a line of coffins set up at the entranceway. Each represented a victim, a superstar who tried and failed to end the streak. There's a coffin for Brock Lesnar with the number 22. The Undertaker comes out and the coffin opens up by itself. Undertaker then looks back at Brock Lesnar's final resting place and the coffin goes up in flames. The Undertaker makes his way to the ring as the commentators talk about Brock Lesnar's reaction and his facial expressions and this is interesting. When you watch this match back knowing what we now know, yeah, you can tell that Brock had things on his mind here and he wasn't his usual self. It's subtle but it's definitely there. The two men square off and the bell rings. Undertaker strikes first but Brock answers with a suplex. Taker gets clotheslined over the top rope but the dead man lands on his feet. So far so good. Lesnar clubs the Undertaker's chest but Undertaker has no problem getting back into the ring to continue the match. The Phenom punishes Lesnar in the corner. Lesnar's shoulder becomes a target for the Undertaker. Lesnar tries to throw himself into the dead man but Brock's shoulder ends up taking more punishment. The fight spills to the outside where the Undertaker maintains the advantage, eventually hitting a leg drop as Lesnar's head lays on the apron. So far it's been all Undertaker. The dead man hits snake eyes, he goes for the choke slam, Lesnar counters and the beast goes for the F5, but Taker is able to ram Lesnar into the turnbuckle causing more damage to Lesnar's shoulder. The Undertaker misses a big boot in the corner and this mistake allows Lesnar to lead the match. Taker gets taken down on the outside and many believe this is when Undertaker got concussed but I'm not so sure. He seems to have his wits about him when the match gets back into the ring but really these things are hard to tell. It could have been anything that concussed the Undertaker and even the Phenom himself has no idea how it happened. Lesnar begins targeting the leg and Taker gets rammed into the barrier on the outside and then Brock hits a suplex in the ring. It's from this point on where you can tell that something wasn't right with The Undertaker. Lesnar goes for a headlock but Undertaker begins clearly communicating with Brock. He looks dazed and Lesnar is seemingly changing up his offense as The Undertaker continues talking to Brock. This is notable too because you could never usually see or hear The Undertaker talking or calling spots in the ring. But what makes it obvious that something wasn't right was just the look on The Undertaker's face. Lesnar slows his offense down, focusing now on the Undertaker's midsection while avoiding his head, but Undertaker seemingly snaps out of it with a running DDT. Both men get to their feet and the Undertaker tries to come back with offense but he stumbles quite a bit. He's trying his best here and he's trying to shake it off. Two clotheslines in the corner are followed up with snake eyes in the big boot. This gets the audience going and a loud cheer fills the Superdome, but the Undertaker was still in a bad way. 
The Undertaker hits a choke slam and he rushes to cover Brock, but Brock kicks out at two. Taker scoops up Brock for the tombstone, but Brock reverses with an F5. The audience are relieved when Undertaker kicks out, but they aren't really surprised either. This was The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak after all. Taker wasn't losing tonight. Undertaker suckers Lesnar into the Hell's Gate, but Lesnar gets out by drilling Taker into the mat. The Undertaker now can't stand on his own two feet as Brock drags the dead man back into the middle of the ring. The Hell's Gate gets applied once again, and once again, Lesnar escapes by lifting Taker into the air and slamming him to the mat. Lesnar then locks in a Kimura, but The Undertaker reverses with an armbar. Taker momentarily gets to his feet, but he goes back down to apply more pressure. Lesnar makes it to the ropes. The Undertaker props himself up in the corner, and the Phenom is now absolutely out of it. He's trying to stand up unassisted, but it's actually scary how far The Undertaker was gone here. It's shocking when Taker goes for old school. He somehow manages to balance for a brief moment, but Brock grabs The Undertaker and we see the second F5. The Undertaker again kicks out and Lesnar nor Paul Heyman can believe it. The Undertaker was seeing this one through to the end no matter what. I want to point something out here too. Brock Lesnar made the call to pull The Undertaker down early from old school and it was absolutely the right call. Taker took two steps and then he completely froze up. Brock quickly realised that Taker couldn't go any further and so Lesnar pulled Taker down for the F5 spot before Taker could jump into position. It's a very small thing but it was an excellent call by Lesnar. A hush comes over the Superdome as Brock delivers two German suplexes, both times without the normal velocity that the Beast was capable of. You'll also notice Taker taking all the impact on his lower back. Brock attacks Taker in the corner but somehow the Undertaker grabs Brock and he delivers the last ride. This was the first time since the first F5 that Taker had stood up unassisted and again somehow the Undertaker proves he's superhuman by scooping up Brock Lesnar and delivering the tombstone. Lesnar kicks out at two but at least the Undertaker seemed okay. What we didn't know though is that the Undertaker was now completely on autopilot. We'll talk about this a bit later but the Undertaker's memory of this match has been completely wiped. He doesn't remember a single thing about being in the ring with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. The Undertaker goes for the tombstone one last time. Brock Lesnar reverses it and we see the third F5 of the match. Brock covers The Undertaker. It's the audience response that says it all. The unimaginable had happened at WrestleMania 30. The referee's hand coming down for the three count felt like a mistake, like it wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. Fans in attendance did not know how to react. They didn't boo, they didn't cheer. It's absolute shock that comes over the entire Superdome as The Undertaker's streak comes to an end at WrestleMania 30. Brock's theme music doesn't play right away and this just heightens the atmosphere inside the Superdome. When I watched this at home, I didn't pay much attention to the match. It was always a given that The Undertaker would win at WrestleMania. I remember seeing the third F5 and turning my attention to something else in the room. And when I heard the three count, my head turned right back to the TV. And I sat there in silence like everyone else. It didn't feel like it was supposed to happen. When the giant graphic came on the screen, that's when everyone realized what had happened. And that's when it was official. The audience booed when they saw the giant 21 and 1 on the giant screens in the arena. Lesnar's theme music begins playing and Brock laughed as he walked back to the gorilla position. The Undertaker couldn't get back to his feet. It took the Phenom around four times before he could finally stand up unassisted. And there's a moment where you can see The Undertaker's eyes darting around from left to right. He was trying to lock his side onto something, anything, just to maintain focus, but he couldn't do it. The audience gave The Undertaker a thunderous ovation when the dead man eventually pulled himself up. A thank you Taker chant breaks out as The Undertaker makes his way back up the ramp and fans were left still in a state of shock as WrestleMania continued on.
The Undertaker was completely out of it when he got backstage. Trainers who came to help Taker said that he didn't know where he was, he didn't know what had just happened, and he didn't know why he was in New Orleans. It's been well documented that Vince McMahon left WrestleMania to go to the hospital with The Undertaker, but on the recent Last Ride documentaries that aired on the WWE Network, we also learned that Brock Lesnar went to the hospital too, along with Vince Taker and The Undertaker's wife Michelle McCool. Say what you want about Brock, but he took the time to make sure The Undertaker was okay after the match, and to me at least, that says a lot. It also says a lot that Vince McMahon would leave WrestleMania to go to the hospital. And remember, Triple H was kinda involved in the main event, so Hunter really wasn't able to oversee the show finale from a backstage perspective. The Undertaker couldn't even remember his name when asked by doctors. Michelle said that her husband asked her what his name was in an attempt to cheat his way out of hospital, but The Undertaker wouldn't be going anywhere for the night. Michelle said that The Undertaker remembered his name at 4am in the morning. The Undertaker said, I don't know how that match happened, I have no recollection of it. My last memory of that day was at about 3.30 in the afternoon. So what I think happened was, between getting older and not having all the reps and taking all the bumps throughout the course of the year, eventually it caught up with me. I think that explains what happened in New Orleans and the concussion. It was one concussion and one match, but it destroyed my confidence. Immediately after the match took place, fans scrambled around to find answers and the rumours were seriously rampant. At first, fans were in denial and every theory in the book was thrown out as to why The Undertaker lost at WrestleMania 30. Some thought that Lesnar went into business for himself, which is ridiculous because Brock had done business with everyone else in WWE, plus you can see Brock taking care of The Undertaker during the last 5 minutes of the match. Some fans believed that the match finish was changed in the middle of the bout and The Undertaker had no other choice but to play along with the boss's orders. Some even thought that The Undertaker went into business for himself and he lay down for Brock, completely flipping the script and defying Vince McMahon's creative plans. It was one theory after another because fans did not want to accept that The Undertaker was beaten at WrestleMania, and the thought of The Undertaker agreeing to end the streak seemed extremely far-fetched in the eyes of many Undertaker fans. Add in the fact that this was Brock Lesnar a man who was seen as a part-timer and a man who many thought was undeserving of such a monumental passing of the torch. It didn't help either that Paul Heyman stirred the pot at every given opportunity. Heyman loved to create buzz and he loved to create speculation, but Heyman knew exactly what he was doing when he gave interviews and he intentionally placed doubt in people's heads. The most simple explanation was the right explanation here, and it's as simple as this. Vince McMahon wanted The Undertaker to lose, and The Undertaker agreed. The original creative for the match saw The Undertaker get the victory, but just before WrestleMania 30 began, Vince McMahon changed the outcome, and The Undertaker didn't protest. Taker said, Internally, and the way this business works, I knew someday it would end. In our industry, you don't walk away like Floyd Mayweather or Rocky Marciano. It just doesn't happen that way in wrestling. It was always in the back of my mind that it would end, although most of my peers and people that I worked with thought it was a horrible decision. I just asked Vince, are you sure? Is this what you want? He was like, if it's not Brock, then who can beat you? Alright, it's your call. Everybody thinks I have all this juice like I can say yes or say no. I could have said no, but what good was that gonna do? That really would have disappointed people. What do I do? I go out and throw a tissy and go, if I'm not going over, then I'm not going in. That's not me, I'm business, and business comes first before anything personal. I double checked and made sure he was sure 100% that was what he wanted to do, and that was the plan, so I went with it. So many times we hear of wrestlers refusing to do jobs and refusing to put others over. Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, Hulk Hogan, and here's The Undertaker with the legendary WrestleMania streak, pretty much the legacy of The Undertaker, and he just double checks with Vince before going out and doing the job. It speaks a lot for The Undertaker's character outside of the ring, and no matter what you may think of the last minute change to the match outcome, The Undertaker was doing what so many other wrestling legends refused to do. 
lose a high stakes match, not just a high stakes match, the ultimate match. Whoever broke the streak would go down in history and while I really do wish it was someone maybe a little younger than Brock and someone who was ready to actually carry the torch week in and week out, the fact that The Undertaker agreed to end the streak with no resistance just makes the man so much more likeable. Guys like Jim Ross and Steve Austin said they wouldn't have booked the streak to end and personally speaking, if I knew the Undertaker had more WrestleManias still in him, I wouldn't have booked it either, but what's done is done, and the explanation, as previously stated, is very simple. Vince McMahon wanted the streak to end. And so, this leaves us with another question. Why did Vince want The Undertaker's streak to end? The closest answer we've got is a very public statement that Vince gave on the Stone Cold podcast. Keep in mind that this was a show that aired on the WWE Network. When asked about the WrestleMania 30 outcome, Vince McMahon said... No one wants to give back to the business more than Mark Holloway. He knew it was important to give back to the business. There comes a time in which it's time to do that. Looking down the talent roster, who else could Undertaker possibly work with and, at that time, give back in the biggest possible way he could to help someone become a star? Who was it going to be? There was no one on the roster, potentially. It was timing, and the one person whose time was there at that moment, and who Mark felt that, well, this is it, it was Brock. Steve Austin pressed Vince McMahon on this statement, saying that there's no way that this was The Undertaker's decision, and Vince took responsibility and he said it was initially a Vince McMahon idea. Vince went on to say, It was a shock to everybody, and that's on me. Those decisions aren't easy to make, but you have to make difficult decisions sometimes, and I think I made the right call at the right time. While many felt that The Undertaker was going to ride off into the sunset after WrestleMania 30, the dead man would return, and The Undertaker's search for the perfect final match would soon begin. This will all get covered on the channel soon, but if you can't wait, I'd recommend checking out The Undertaker's last ride documentary on the WWE Network. Thanks for watching, and take care.